in Matthew chapter 18 last last Sunday uh, pastor introduced us to Matthew chapter 18 and that is where we, we will be continuing from Matthew chapter 18 verse 1 Matthew chapter 18 verse 1 and uh, before we kick off I would like for, for us to pray let us bow our heads everlasting father in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you for such an opportunity that that which you've deposited that which you've deposited in me God Almighty you will be able through your spirit God Almighty to minister to the hearts of every listener and Holy Spirit I pray may you give me utterance may you guide my speech may you take total charge and preeminence over this sanctuary and may that will of God the perfect will of God concerning us this morning in this service be done in Jesus name Amen Amen so, um, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1, says, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So I would like for us, as we talk about becoming as little, <laughs> the last time I stood here to minister, uh, last year's uh, Youth Sunday, the topical sermon, I, I ministered in the second service, and the message was becoming what you behold. Or becoming whom you behold. And again today, as we kick off, I'm seeing becoming as little children. And uh, as Minister Grace uh, does research about death, <laughs> yeah, um, I'll be, I, I think I'll delve in the doctrine of becoming, the sanctification, if you call it. But what does Jesus mean by unless you are converted? Other, another translation, the Living Bible says, verse 3, unless you turn to God from your sins and become as little children, you will never get into the kingdom of God. Jesus is addressing believers. Tunakubaliana, disciples came to him with a question. Who is the greatest among us? They had, been debate, they had been debating. Jesus is saying, answering them, unless you turn to God from your sins and become as little children, you will never get into the kingdom of God. This phrase, turn to God from your sins, is used also in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, where Peter says, each one of you must turn from sin, return to God. So about becoming as little children has something to do with turning from sin and turning towards God. Luke chapter 11 verse, no Luke chapter 13, sorry. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Not at all. And Jesus is speaking. And don't you realize that you also will perish unless you leave your evil ways and turn to God? Do you see the, the, the pattern I'm building? In, I've not done uh, Hebrew language. I've not studied it. Neither have I done the Greek. But as I was preparing this, I needed to understand what this turning to God, 
and all that meant. In the Hebrew language, the original language that the Bible was written for the sake of comprehension, I noticed that the Hebrew language for the term repent is return. In the Greek language, repent is change your mind. So as we see the consistency in Luke 13, Jesus is saying, you will perish unless you return. In Matthew 18 verse 1, return and become like little children. In Acts 2.38, return, I'm seeing repentance. But here's the catch. If you don't do that, you will perish. Here. Uh, if you don't live, unless you leave your evil ways and turn to God, you will perish. Matthew 18, unless you return to God and leave your sins, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He is addressing believers. So that begs the question. Are there believers, people who have given their lives to Christ, accepted the, 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 the gift of salvation, is there a possibility of not entering the kingdom of heaven? I mean, he's addressing believers. The disciples came to him. But as, they, as their minds are in the cloud about the kingdom, one assume washafika, Jesus is saying, hold up. Unless you change, unless you turn. So about becoming like a child, Jesus is talking about repentance. And that is the message that Jesus is giving to the disciples. When we talk of becoming like a child, at what point did Jesus mention that these are grown folks? These are adults. At what point do we become adults? At the age of 18? Is it a constitutional thing? At 20, 25, 50? Jesus is not necessarily talking about age. It is a change of mind, like I mentioned in Greek. Repentance is a change of mind. So by becoming like a child, it is not an age thing. It is a mind thing. Repentance is a change of mind towards becoming like a child. So when we come into salvation... We come as adults, we are welcomed. As Hannah in the morning was saying, come as you are, but don't stay as you are. When you come into the kingdom as an adult, you need to change your mind concerning certain things. So, this adulthood of mind that we have, where did it come from? I'll take us back to the book of Genesis during the fall of man. When Adam was uh, tempted, he was commanded by God not to eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. He decided to disobey. That is Genesis chapter 3. He decided to disobey and he ate the fruit. He ate the fruit because he wanted to be wise. Because uh, he looked at it and it was good for the for food, for the flesh. And he wanted to, you know, become like God. He wanted this wisdom. He, didn't, he did not want to depend on God for wisdom, for direction, for this life as we know it. He wanted to live life without accountability. And it is at that point that the mind of man became corrupt. It is at that point that man became an adult. So when we are born as young children, you don't need to teach a child to sin. Where did that come from? There is an adulthood they are born with in their soul. There is something in their mind that is very much corrupt from way before, from Adam's time, from Adam himself. In the same garden, there was the tree 
of life. And now in Romans chapter 5, um, Paul and Eliezer, just the way sin came from one man, uh, righteousness also comes from one man, the second Adam, that is Jesus. When I talk about the, the, the fruit, it is a representation of the world. This other fruit of life, it is a representation of the kingdom. When Jesus is saying, once you enter the kingdom, you need to change your mind, he's addressing worldliness, you live worldliness. Where does worldliness come from? That fruit. In what sense? I'll read Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate it. I want you to note those three things. It was good for, for food. It was pleasant to the eyes. And it would make one wise. I want to relate that to First John chapter 2 from verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of this world. The enemy presented to man worldliness. Romans chapter 6 says, you become a slave to the one that you obey. Man became a slave to the world. And that is when the mind was corrupt. Now, about pride of life. It is mentioned here and the desire to be wise. Other versions say you will become like God. So it is no longer about God, it is about yourself. Um, pride is now what, in this context, in Matthew 18, is what the disciples were struggling with. They left the world, believed Jesus, came into the kingdom, and now they are debating who's the greatest. You get it? They have carried the, 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 the corrupt mind. Their mind hasn't changed. They haven't repented. Their minds are not transformed. So whatever worldliness they, the enemy gave them, whatever worldliness they had in them, wamekuja nayo sasa kwa kingdom and they are debating what they are dealing with is pride now jesus says as much as you have believed me and you have not changed your mind concerning how the kingdom and the world operates you will not enter the kingdom of heaven forget about being the greatest you see entering iyo sasa your watcher you don't even need to debate on that first change your mind then we can talk about greatness in the kingdom. So the issue here that Jesus is addressing is living worldliness when you are in the kingdom. It is something that all of us uh, suffer from at some point. There's a way we used to do business in the world. And now, uh, for you to get a client, you have to bribe. For you to operate in a certain uh, industry or institution, there's a way you used to do it in the world, but now in the kingdom, your mind has not changed. You are still doing the same, same thing. Yes, you have believed that Jesus died for your sins. You've been preached to. John 3.16. Umekubali, sawa, mimi ni meokoka. Basasa ni kuokoka ya jina. My mind has not changed. You see what I used to do in the world, in my business, that is not changing. That is the problem. And Jesus is saying, uh, be careful. You will not enter the... It's quite sobering, eh? 
kabisa. <laughs> Now if you look at me like that, eh, sijui kama nitaweza kuhubiri. Please smile. Eh, <laughs> ni maandiko. Ni maandiko. Mimi hata sina ubaya. Uh, I didn't choose Ma- Matthew 18. Matthew 18 chose me. So I'm just delivering. Uh, be jovial. And um, so the, the wisdom of the world that we come with we, we come with and carry in the kingdom of God is the problem. God in 1 Corinthians says that he chose the, the message of the gospel to be foolish to those that think they are wise. Actually, if you are born again to the world you are a fool cuz you tell me you really believe someone died for you 2000 years ago because of your sins that it beats logic it doesn't even make sense ajis hasa so it is those people when you were may humble their minds now can choose to put faith in Christ yes to the wise this is very foolish thing to even ponder that is why most of the people that are atheists are quite learned because they want to put logic in everything in matters faith actually let me say that so it becomes a problem when you exercise the worldly wisdom in matters faith and uh, the bible goes ahead to tell us that um, the, we, the the foolishness of god is the, the wisdom of man mali mefika upon the foolishness ya mungu yuko so as much as you think you are wise here in the kingdom change your mind concerning that change your mind from being a wise person and understand that you need to be foolish jesus is talking about dependence adam fell when he desired not to depend on god for food i've told you not to eat from this tree uh, no I, i don't think you quite understand what this food does to my flesh I mean can't you see the way it's desirable for food don't you see how pleasing it is dependability oh so uh, I won't be giving points we will be picking points along the way Pasi usually says three points maximum four so along the way you just be picking points uh, I, I don't know how many they are but I don't think they exceed three I'm I'm learning so I don't think they are past three So the first one is dependability. And um in second no in Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 I'll read. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 the TLB version. The Bible says And now just as you trusted Christ to save you trust him too for each day's problems live in vital union with him now that you have eaten of the tree of life the way you trusted Jesus in your foolishness continue to be that fool in Christ just as you received Christ continue walking in him you received him in foolishness first corinthians chapter 1 but along the way you decide to become smart along the way you borrow worldly ideas that is not repentance there's a way you used to do things in the, there's a way the world does things business wise relationship wise marriage wise dating wise you borrow that idea and come with it in the kingdom your mind is still in the world jesus is saying become like a child talk to me let me tell you how business is done deuteronomy says it is god who gives us the ability to make wealth to make profit but you the way you understand business and how profit is made when you come there you are telling god i think i know I think I know better. Niko na experience ya dunia, niko na experience kwa hii biashara. So, I don't really need your advice. I am good on my own. The problem with with that is 
in James chapter 1. You develop what the Bible calls double-mindedness. The mind that you had in the world, umekuja nayo hapa, and now the Bible says, if anyone doesn't know what to do, let him go before God. Be a fool in that sense, in admitting, God, I don't know. I, like, like a little child, you admit, God, I don't know how to do this. How do I do it? I don't know how to make money. Your word says that you are the one who teaches us to make money. Teach me. Now, the, the, the problem is we, we have this mind of the world. We come with it in the kingdom. And then we go to God and pray. In James chapter 1, the Bible says that person will not receive anything because their faith is not entirely on God. You see, like a little child, mtoto wako anakuja na kuambia, daddy, ni a bike. But at the same time, he, the, the child is hinting, ato si ponunua, baba nani, now the neighbor will buy for me. As a dad, you, you, you will feel like holding back. Okay, fine, then watch a suendo witishe baba nani. That is the kind of message is passed in James, James chapter 1, verse 6, 7, 8 there. Double-mindedness. We go to God. We are not necessarily saying that ato si tafanya, but he sees our heart as we are praying, as we are asking for that which we don't have. And God withholds because uh, your mind is not trans transformed. You have a double mind. There is something that is stamped in you that needs to be transformed in terms of understanding him and differentiating this is the world and this is how God wants me to operate. That is a problem in the kingdom and God is saying this morning change. Change your mind. Don't come to me as an adult. Come to me as a child. It even changes the way you pray. There are you see, in Romans chapter 8, the Bible says we don't even know how to pray. If you can accept that you don't know how to pray and you are asking the Holy Spirit to help you pray, so why are you not trusting that you don't know how to do business? Exactly, it's the mind. So when the Spirit is born again, that is justification. That is what Jesus freely offers to you. That is grace. Going forward, you need to be obedient. You need to become like a child. You need to change your mind. You need to repent. Last evening, uh, you will perish. Luke, Luke 13, chapter 3. Uh, oh no, Luke 13, verse 3. And verse 5, Pia in Arudiapo. You will perish. So, uh, to those that were taught John 3.16, Pekeake, now you see the importance of Bible study. It is important to grasp everything. Nachukua grace na unasema, si mungu amenirusu, si mungu amenikubali vile niko. And you quote Romans 8.35, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. <laughs> um, the opposite of this pride thing that we are talking about we are going to learn from the prodigal son. My next point, God woke me up on Friday night. Can I be Fungua, Nataka, you quote the prodigal son. Uh, there are other points about becoming like a child that I had, about innocence and confession and all that, but God would have us focus on Luke chapter number 15, the story about the prodigal son, um, a, a passage that we are quite familiar with. It's from verse 17. Well, it's actually, it starts a bit above, but I would like to read from verse 17. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, when he finally did what? Come to his senses. When it finally struck his brain. He said, at home, even, even the hired men have food enough and to spare. And here I am, 
dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Please take me on as a hired man. When you understand the love of God, when God reveals himself to you, you see your worthlessness. Is that the right term? I guess so, I suppose. Um, there are times when I'm worshipping here and the glory of God comes upon me. I feel like quitting. I see this dirt in me that is unworthy to stand before God. When God just decides to minister to me, when the Holy Spirit is upon me, I feel like quitting. Honestly, that glory, I feel like telling God, you know what? Mimi naona, weendelea tu na watu wamesonga songa. You see Pastor Willie, weendelea na ye. You see Pastor Jotham, watu wenye wamesonga songa. Because now, when, I, when I'm in the presence of the glory of God, naona kabisa sister ili, haa isifai. Nasikia kwambia mungu, we tafuta tu mtu mingine akusabu. You see, even stones can do it. Sasa mimi umeona nini kuwangu. Mimi, why? What did you see in me yenye unataka ni worship? I don't know how to do this. Nasikia ni nijifiche mali. I can't, I can't stand it. And, and I understood it when Pastor Willie was saying, <laughs> wale watu wanasema wameona mungu. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I get it. Now, this is the experience the prodigal son is having. Anaona, if he goes, he, 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 he's perceiving that when he goes, he'll be accepted. You see, it is at this point that salvation takes place. When you say, enyewe kabisa kabisa, mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Na mungu, kama amenikubalivo hivo, I am willing to accept it. At, it is at that point that salvation takes place. Now, this part of now confession, and I will go, and I will tell him that I have sinned against heaven and against you, and just accept me as I am. That is humility. Seeing the, seeing the grace, seeing that you really don't deserve it, seeing that you are unworthy. This gift, this favor that God has bestowed upon you, the gift of forgiveness that God is giving you, and the, now the willingness to accept to go back and to turn from this life and walk towards the other. It takes humility because if he had come to his senses as Verse 17 says, if he had come to his senses and decided, yes, I know. Uko kuna chakula mingi, vijakazi, wanashiba na wanabakisha, but I will not go. Nikiburi, ndiwe inasimama katikatia confession, or should I say conviction and confession. We, we went to a mission in Gakoyo. We were welcomed. These people have been preached to before. They know Jesus. This is not the first time. But mutu nasikia tu anasema kabisa kabisa. It's because they don't want to fully depend on God. They think God, salvation ni kujinyima vitu zini. There are things that I want to hold on here on earth, in this world, that ni kingia mbinguni, mungu wata nikataza. And to some extent, I liked it because it shows that they understand repentance. They know you don't just accept and come and continue with that life. It shows, you know, they understood. So to some extent, I thank God that they will have now an idea. Making Jesus the king, the Lord over your life. Not just the father who loved you and gave you so that you do not uh, perish but have eternal life. It takes a humility to accept that you need a help. Kiburi ndiyo kituwe inafanya unasema, yes, I know this, but I'm not willing to do it. 
I know the truth, but I'm not willing to walk in it. The Bible says, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Too much knowledge isn't really as important as the action that you put in it, in love. So, um, when Matthew 18 talks about be like little children and be humble, uh, humility is gotten. You see, these three things, we, we are talking about pride and humility. The things of the world, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The moment you resist those things, humility na kuja automatic. I mean, humility, I, I don't think humility is something that you pray for. If at all you are not concerned with the things of this world, if you are concerned about pleasing God and all that, then it is very easy to be humble because you don't really care about this. Abraham was a very wealthy man. And the Bible says that even at Avilalifika Canaan, he lived in tents. The things of this world didn't matter that much to him. In Romans, no, in Hebrews 11, it says he looked forward to a city that is built by God. These things that I possess, there's a time Pastor Jotham was here and he spoke of a woman who uh, had a vision about the rapture and the furnitures were tied to her leg. So instead of going up, kuna vitu zimemshika zinamrudisha chini. Worldliness. Come to the kingdom and change your mind. Resist these three things. These are the things that the enemy will constantly bring to your disposal, tempting you. Look at Jesus. Turn these stones into bread. Flesh. Look at this. I'll give you all these possessions of the world. Jump. Malaika watakudaka. Ndi ujulikane wewe ni nani. Kiburi. You resist that. Resist the enemy. He will flee. The enemy will only, always, ever, the things that are in the world. You shun that. Pastor Shan. You shun that. S-H-U-N. You resist that. Humility nakuja automatic. This is not something that you need to uh, fast and pray for. We continue with the story of the prodigal son. Um, yeah, he returned. He was welcomed. Verse 25. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard the dance, music coming from the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back. Okay. I, I, because of time, I'm willing to skip all that. And verse 28. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment and at any time, and yet you have never, and you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. This brother of the prodigal son, this is someone that has been with the father. This is someone in our picture today that has been in the kingdom. But he's angry about the brother's prosperity, the brother's wins in our modern language. He's not celebrating the wins of his brother. He's angry. Now the father, in his humility, anakuja. Pleading, kuja, join sherehe. Why are you angry? Mimi nimekuwa hapa. Nashina nikiitisha. Okay. He, it is not mentioned that aliitisha. What uh, is written here is, he was complaining that the father never slaughtered for him a young goat. So he is upset. This reminds me of a passage in... Um, James chapter 4. Should be James, yes. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. 
This young brother is asking for a goat indirectly. He's complaining that yeye ajawai chinjiwa mbuzi. And he is upset and he is angry. Jesus is telling us to become like little children, not to become childish. This is a childish person. Why are you complaining? Ushayona mtoto, ukim unamunulia a toy car and a ball and a bike. Jirani anakuja, anakuja, akichukua ball, she, the, the, the kid leaves the car and wants the ball. Yenye neighbor akonayo. Neighbor kichukua bike, anachana na ball, anakuja, anachukua bike. That's childishness. We are not being told to become that. Childishness, in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 12, it will help us understand childishness further. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And when I read that, love just comes to mind. For everyone who partakes only milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. He is childish. This denotes a tone of negativity. You being childish. In short, the writer Anasema, you need to grow. Spiritual growth. What are we learning? When Jesus is talking about becoming like a child, he is saying, in the mind, in your soul, become like a child in your soul. That is what we need to work on. But you see, in the spirit, I need you to grow. You see the distinction? Eh? In the soul, become like a child. In the mind and in the will, ukiaka kiburi kando, when you say, when you know this is the right thing to do, you go ahead and do it. The soul in atulia. In Hebrews 5, nasema, you need to go back and be taught the elementary truths. Huyu mtoto mwenye akonaizi toisi zote. Jirani akikuja na ana. You need to be taught love, sharing. How you live with your neighbor. How you live with your brother. You see? Mbaka mtu anajindo, kwani huku? Mimi nimekuja saizi unatakaizi toisi zote. Kwani sazile siko? Zina kwanga zimefungiwa. It is at that point when the world start questioning our our, our, our conduct as believers. Anashino, kwani nyimu na mbanga mungu mgani? Nimekuja huku muna ni treat hivi the same way I was being treated in the world. Jesus is emphasizing on spiritual growth. The need to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And um, so when the prodigal son's brother is asking, I, I, I'm, I'm seeing a father who is wondering, what is with, it, with this attitude? Because the father answers, all that I have is yours. I mean, what's with the attitude? What's with this attitude that you have? Speaking of attitude, I would like us to read Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. <laughs> Your attitude, is it projected? Thank you. Your attitude should be the kind that was shown to us by Jesus Christ. Who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God. He laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. Verse 8. And he humbled himself, even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal's death on a cross. Disciples are here talking about who is the greatest. Let's assume there were two disciples. And then they come to Jesus, who is the greatest. I think the answer is right there. Isn't Jesus the greatest in the kingdom? Isn't he the head of the church? But they are not seeing that. Your attitude should be like that of Jesus. Though he was God. How, how does that song go? Yes, that song. And he humbled himself even further. 
verse 9. Yet it was because of this, what? Humility. It was because of this that God raised him up, raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name. So he's the greatest, the one that has the name above every other name. But here are believers that are fighting each other about who is the greatest, about their own needs. Verse 9, Kaburi lili shindwa. You know, God raised him up and gave him a, a name that is above every other name. Why? Because of humility. Ah, yeah. John, no, sorry, not John. Uh, James, chapter 4, verse 5. Verse 6, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Jesus humbled himself, and God raised him up. Uh, what's the other verses that says uh, God lifts those that humble themselves? Is it the same scripture in different version? But you get the, you get the idea. Grace is given to the humble, those that depend completely on God, those that have changed their mind, those that have a different attitude of what the kingdom operates like. I'm fond of saying this. God chooses the best to those that leave the choice to him. If you humble yourself and acknowledge that God knows better what I need, I don't know myself as I think I do. And so I'm leaving the choices of my life to Jesus. God will definitely give his best because you have humbled yourself in knowledge, in matters life. I don't know. I am a child. God will give you the best. We continue in Matthew. Hey, it's 1020. You know, Deacon Eric said that if we continue like this, one chapter a Sunday, it might take us 22 years. Uh, we are moving at a pace of two verses a Sunday. This needs three lifetimes to cover. We continue. Let's continue from verse 6. But whoever causes, or therefore, verse 4, therefore whoever humbles himself as a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, those who lose their lives will get them. Those who hold on to their lives will lose them. You come into the kingdom and you hold on to your life as you know it. You will lose it. That is the perishing bit. Verse 6, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for, he, for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Whoever, Jesus is talking about whoever. Verse 7 is talking about the world. Verse 6 is talking about whoever causes a believer. A believer is walking heavenwards. They have changed their mind. They have repented. And here you are coming, causing them to stumble, directing them off the course. There is a very harsh text there. It, is, it will be better for you to be tied. Uh, at the place where I work, there is this, uh, she manages the next business. She knows I'm born again. She claims to be born again. That is not for me to judge. And at some point, we were discussing, just having a casual talk. And um, there before, I had mentioned how God has given me the grace to overcome addictions. Told her of how in the world, I used to do drugs and all that. I used to chew me, I used to drink alcohol. But the moment I got born again, 
none of those things nimeweka kwa mdomo by the grace of god we got to talking even much father and she, and i told her even a woman i've not known a woman kutoka niokoke and that used to be my life look at the grace of god look at what god does you know god is so powerful these addictions that people unajiambia kwanza leo sitafanya it's only one week ikienda sana unajipata hapo I, I was so happy with God, what God has done in my life, and I was expressing it. Your story is At some time later, uh, I don't know how this conversation came up again, and she told me, "Muridi wacha ni kuambie," and now she's closing her eyes to, you know, to to express the certainty of what she's saying. Na muridi wacha ni kuambie. Unona apo hapo akuna dambi talking about sex before marriage. Unona apo si umeokoka. Now see, you, you are dating and you know the person that you are going to be with. What is, the, what, what is stopping you? As in, she de kwa Hey, she, she's, uh, she's Catholic. She de kwa api. Ume, ume okoka. Na, u, hapo, muridi acha ni kuambie, hapo hakuna dhambi kabisa. Na akoshua hakuna. Jukiona vila naongea, mbako na, mashindo hii, 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 hii unatoa wapi. Lacking the spirit of truth is a problem in a believer's life. He unatoa wapi? Na imeandikwa hapo tu fornication. Yaani ni kusoma utaki kusoma. Mimi nikaacha akaongea, nikamaliza because uh, when I saw her do this. <laughs> I, I knew this is not someone that you can reason with. Mm? So I decided I'm not going to give holy things to dogs. Uh, um, it is biblical. Eh? I decided I'm not going to do that. Whoever ameshika hivi, amebadilisha akili, this person has repented, they are walking heavenwards. Nakujo na muambia, hapo, hakuna dhambi. It is better for that person. Afungwe. Because, ile kitu ataona, kitamramba. It is not going to be pleasant. Very difficult uh, thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 the bible says bad company ruins what good good morals i'll read jude chapter 1 verse 4 my time is up alafu tufunge jude chapter 1 verse 4 for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch an isome kwa the Living Bible translation. I say this because some godless teachers have warmed their way in among you, saying that after we become Christians, we can do just as we like without fear of God's punishment. The fate of such people was written long ago for they have turned against our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Be careful the people that you befriend. Godless teachers wa meingia umumu. Kuambia, unwana ato ukiokoka, you can live the way you are. Sindu ime andiko hapa, ni mimi nasoma maandiko. After we become Christians, after, we can do just as we like. You don't need to repent. You don't need to be humble. See, you have, you have accepted Christ. You don't need to be humble. You don't need to change your mind. You don't, you don't need to become like a child. That person is turning you against our Master Jesus. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. Nipewe ki F. Nipewe ki F. Yeah, so we will end it. We will end it there. Let us have one master in our lives. Let us be transformed in the mind. Let us understand that the way the kingdom operates is not the way the world should Everlasting king of all glory. 
We thank you and we bless you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit of truth. And God, we thank you for ministering to our hearts. We submit ourselves to you, our King. Our mind and our will we give to you, dear Jesus. As we desire to meet you in heaven, as we desire that you come and pick us up, oh God. May you lead us. May you order, order our feet. May you, God Almighty, protect us and shield us from bad company. And may you cause us, God, to become as little children, Father. Help us, Father, in this journey of salvation, God. Hold our hands, for it is your promise that you shall never leave nor forsake us. Receive all honor, glory, and adoration, our Master Jesus. Amen.